right, let's jump right into it. Thanks everybody for attending episode 25 and let's talk recruiting. Uh, they go, are going quick. We're starting to get, we were just discussing beforehand, we have some uh, seasoned professionals on webinars with one or two under their belt of, on doing these session, sessions. So much appreciated for everybody participating as panelists and attending as attendees. Today's topic is gonna to be what every recruiter's LinkedIn profile should have. We all basically have uh, a LinkedIn profile. I don't know of any recruiter. I'm sure there's a few out there that do not have a presence on LinkedIn, but I do not know who they are. With us today, we have Matt Liptek. And am I saying your last name right, Matt? That's, yes, that's correct. Sure. Out of Boston, we're commenting how he is in a public workspace. Um, much courage to you on that one. That's uh, excellent to see, actually. And Kristen Silva, who's not signed on yet, I'm going to look for her in a second here to see if she's in the attendees. I'll add her as a panelist. Uh, she's out of D.C., Matt out of Boston. We have Sean Rakow out of Chicago and Andy Gill out of Minneapolis. So with that said, let's, let's go right into it. And Matt, I'm going to go to you first to bring up your key item that you want to start on. Oh uh, yeah, thank you, Sean. Uh, my name's Matt Liptek. I'm part of a company in Boston here called Mimecast. We're an email security software company, and they've been in business since 2003. Uh, I've been in the recruiting industry. Uh, I'm the director of talent acquisition here. I've been in the recruiting industry now for about 25 plus years, and uh, I've been in and out of the tech industry. And I've hired a lot of recruiting teams, uh, a lot of seasoned recruiters, mid-level recruiters, junior recruiters. I look for uh, LinkedIn profiles that are, are not only robust in the content, but I look at that main top portion of the LinkedIn profile first and foremost when I'm doing searches for recruiters and so forth. I'd like to see a uh, profile picture uh, first and foremost. I'd like to see a professional headshot if, if that's uh, something that uh, can be done by that particular individual uh, You know that shows that they really put a lot of uh, um, you know, faith in LinkedIn and they put a lot of trust in, in uh, their profile and putting a professional headshot really uh, stands out amongst the crowd. As well, I like to see uh, their top line uh, head, you know, the headline of their profile to actually identify who they are, what they, what actually what they do, you know, senior recruiter, uh, senior talent acquisition, manager of talent acquisition uh, and the company they've worked for or work for currently. Uh, so that top portion really stands out for me. And I even a picture uh, as a background picture uh, of the company they work for or something along those lines would really uh, uh, make that profile uh, more of a robust profile for me. So, and of course the city and, and state that they're working. So I really uh, pay attention to that top portion and it does come across uh, a lot easier in searches as well when you're doing searches through, say I'm looking at LinkedIn recruiter or one of those types of type, uh, software programs to find individuals, uh, it's a quick and easy way to access the individual and to know who they are and what they do. Question for you, Matt, um, the tagline right up on top, right? Versus the title down in your, your, your company or employee record or previous history. And this is probably a personal matter. Do you like to see, to your point, more of a saying or logo or a tagline or people's titles in there. I, I, it seems to be like a hit or miss what people use. Just like, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, my, my personal, that's a great question, Sean. My personal preference would be the, the title of the individual, you know, the title of their role and the company they work for. However, I've seen individuals put in that they're hiring or their company's hiring, uh, their department is hiring. Uh, I have seen, seen people get a little creative. The thing I really don't particularly like is when people put too many titles in there. Uh, you know, they have uh, a forward slash with six different titles across that top header. Uh, that to me gets a little complicated. It gets a little hard to understand what the individual does. And, and for me, it's just not as, as, uh, as attractive a, a profile. Sean or any, any want to add to that, that sort of one piece? Cause it's, I, I too like to see the title in there just because I can't remember exactly the placement of it, but when you do your searches, when I have you, that's what comes up a lot versus, you know, somebody's yeah. current title. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, well, just to reiterate what Matthew said, you know, just the, the brevity of it is important to me. Um, but also 
it should convey what you're passionate about too, beyond what your title is. Um, you know, if you're passionate about, um, you know, hiring technical talent, um, that should be in there in some sort. If you read mine, um, my kind of go-to tagline is I'm a likable recruiter and that's what I'm passionate about. So you'll, you'll find that in my title, um, you know, right there at the top. But I think just being brief and, and also it, it, it should convey something within recruiting that you're passionate about. Sean? Yeah, I have a general agreement there. So mine, you know, I, I, I'm not the likable recruiter like Andy, but uh, um, <laughs> I'm you know, sure you're likable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, call out, you know, my role in the organization, but also, you know, during, you know, we're still actively hiring at my firm through kind of COVID and um, uh, aggressively hiring, actually. So um, mine right now is calling out in caps, like we're still hiring, you know, so not we're still hiring, but we're hiring. So, you know, I want people to, to make sure, you know, for myself and my team that we're brand ambassadors to the organization. Um, so calling out kind of who we are and what we're doing right now in that section, there's a, a quick and easy way to do that there. So. so. So in regards to like branding your profile and sending that message, and this again is, I think it's like one's personal opinion or motivation. Should our profiles be towards advancing our own career since it's in recruiting but since it's in recruiting should it be more about recruiting the talent that we're trying to do to do our job now or, or somehow a combination of both right yeah i mean i think you, you, you by actively kind of managing your profile and and um, building off of it and being active on linkedin I, I think you're doing both at the same time from my perspective um being an active, like, and, and that's what kind of my subject was going to be on your, your activity section of your profile and being, being an active user um, allows you to become a brand ambassador for the organization, but also shows, you know, when you're searching for a job, you know, your future manager may go look at your page and see a lot of activity there and a lot of usage and be like, all right, this person lives and breathes the brand and talks about it. And they're going to do that same thing for my organization. I think too that just like a future manager might look at our page, our candidates are looking at our page too. People that we're interviewing, people that we're talking to and potentially looking at hiring, um, you know, more and more we're dealing with a very informed candidate pool um, of people out there. It's just that society in general and they're going to do their research. And so when they see that, you know, that kind of content on your page and just that diverse content, um, it's going to help you in your recruiting efforts too. I think that uh, the, the you know just to caveat what uh, Sean and Andy are saying too with the pic the profile picture for me when I take when I have a team of of recruiters that I'm managing I make sure that uh, it is essential that we get a professional headshot for every one of the team members just first and foremost to brand that profile a little bit more uh, to the candidates coming through or even to the public because I know that they are a brand for that company. So it is, it, that's, that's very important for me. I've only worked at one place where they actually brought in a professional photographer. And again, they, to, to Matt, to your points, they did it for the whole team. Does, Andy and Sean, have you seen those? I mean, I think that's a great idea. And I think it's sort of kind of a, a must have if you don't already have one. The, the, com the, the company that I did it did it in such a way that it was the same style and same behind background. Sure. For every recruiter. So you just saw this sort of this team thing going in there. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I thought it represented the company in a kind of a unique way as there is the recruiting team. We and did the same thing when I worked at, at cars.com a number of years ago and we rebranded the HR team into the kind of the, the people organization. And as part of our rebrand was to get professional head, headshots for everyone on the HR team with similar back, background and similar styles. So we were all, Kind of showing uni unity behind it. So Nicole in the audience says, uh, "So no selfies." I think it's kind of you, you do with what you got, right? If, if I only got my phone, <laughs> selfie right. it is. Yeah, but yeah, if to to that kind of um, kind of question, you know, not all companies are going to have that ability or that option to step in and do professional headshots for everybody. If you're working for a smaller, more startup, well, startups probably would do that, but you know, it's, it's not always going to be a thing. So yeah, a selfie 
it, you know, it, if it's a professional looking selfie and it looks great, you know, and you know how to edit it and, you know, it looks professional, but there's nothing worse and more, more defeating to, to see a recruiter trying to recruit people and they either don't have a profile picture or it's just, it's just not a good representation of, of them or, or the company they work for. And it is brought up in the, in the chat area about biases based upon the profile or on the, on the picture. Any, any thoughts on that? Matt, I'm going to start with you. This is your, your area. I think that I have seen that particular factor, but not generally um, something that I have witnessed uh, all the time. You know, I have maybe once or twice, but not all the time. Anybody else? I will say that my, my profile picture is from many years ago, so I'm trying to <laughs> defeat my own personal ageism. Like, oh, I look old. I look better back in the nineties. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's I kind of joke, but it is sort of a, a serious point that yep. hopefully in this day and age we're getting through that uh, to the to that point where I am starting to put some diversity and inclusion sessions on the books here for next quarter to, to kind of address that. Uh, Matt, coming coming back to that top of the fold area, which was was your area, your your item. What about the banner that people use behind them? Company specific, personal interest. What are your thoughts yeah, on the banner? Yeah, I mean, quickly, uh, I've actually, um, you know, I've changed my opinion on that. I, you know, and prior to that, I would have something more personal up on that banner. But I think that it does, it is important to brand the company that you're working for. And I, I have changed that and I've branded the companies I've worked for now with something that uh, is applicable. Others? Any, any other input on the banner? Yeah, our, our company, um, you know, we have some marketing uh, produced uh, backgrounds that we can and optionally put on there. And I think that, I think it depends on a lot of, you know, what the space of recruiting that you're in too. Um, you know, I mean, I'm in healthcare IT, you know, healthcare communication systems and, you know, I recruit technical talent. And so, um, you know, anything that, kind of communicates that altruistic passion for technology and healthcare kind of really resonates with our culture and resonates with the people we want to hire. So your background and really everything we're talking about here should really resonate with your end result of, you know, the people that you want to hire and, and having that in mind when doing any of these steps, including that banner, um, taking your own personal feelings out of it and doing what is best for the company you represent. Um, but yeah, I mean, if your company can put up some marketing, you know, time and efforts in that, that that's, that would be great. Yeah. My banner is from one of the employees that just likes to help with some internal marketing. She helps with like our employee newsletter and stuff. And I needed some graphics for a, it, this was back before everything was virtualized. I needed some graphics to get attention for like an open house that we were going to do. And one of them just worked out really nice. Um, I think we were going to use it for like our hot jobs list. And I was like, I can totally use this for my banner. So I just snagged it. So I, really low key, but simple. And then it's got my company name. It's got DC, Maryland, Virginia. It's got our top workplaces banner on it. Like, it just, that's why you're here. I used to do a lot of project work for different companies. So my banner looks like a, a NASCAR car with all kinds of stickers and company names on it. So That's fun. I'll play with Photoshop a little bit, threw it up there. Okay. Excellent. Hey, uh, Kristen, for, thanks for jumping in right there. I'm going to segue over to you on your item or unless Matt, did you have anything to add with? No, no, thank you. Kristen, let's jump over to you. Okay. So you wanted me to chat about, the need to have content on your, I guess, on your profile, basically verifying who you are. I think it's super important to help you stand out as a recruiter um, and not just somebody who happened to, to land in recruiting or is doing some recruiting right now, but when you can show that you're a real person and that you have this depth of experience recruiting in their area, then candidates are more likely to respond to your messages. Um, especially for high in demand skills in the technical space like I do, uh, if I didn't have it built out on my 
LinkedIn profile that way, I don't know if my response rate would be the same. Um, I guess going back to the the age old argument of the value of LinkedIn recruiter seats versus the free version of the profile. I personally like we're kind of stuck into a corner. We have to have the, the paid LinkedIn recruiter tools, but I get such an incredible response rate from just requesting people and building my own network. And I think it's because my network continuously expands in my realm of expertise based on what I'm capable of hiring for. So I might have hired a DevOps engineer and then his DevOps friends want to be friends with me. So it just expands my network that way because they can see the, the skill overlap. And so, I mean, I always try to reflect on what I would want to see if I was looking at a candidate's profile. So I want to make sure that my LinkedIn profile paints that whole picture of why I could be reaching out to them right now. So Kristen, around like your, like we think about our, the work history mm -hmm. and you write summaries in there, are you kind of detailing out like to the specific tech that you recruit for or is it more of like your, your duties that you did as a recruiter or do you get more audience focused, audience facing and that audience is the people you're recruiting? You know what I mean? I changed my opinion on that as my career has evolved. Um, so aside from my current role, my LinkedIn profile work history reads like my resume does. Maybe not exactly verbatim, but pretty close. So that will have the different types of positions, the different tech stacks, et cetera. Some clients where I know I'm allowed to call them out. Um, but for my current company, I have our little summary, like the company summary, so that people know that I'm recruiting for this whole space of types of projects and their role could fit into any one of those categories instead of saying like, I'm just looking for full stack developers all the time for lots of things like come talk to me um, a bit broader for my current position and then I've got my link to my careers page and all that stuff I for I, I'd be curious other people's perspective here but I think my resume probably reads more towards accomplishments and things that were that were, you know, I got done during my time in, in a certain role. Um, and my LinkedIn probably reads a little bit more general um, in terms of like what I'm working on at the time um, and general responsibilities. Um, but I'd be curious other people's perspective on, on where to go there. So um, like I said, resume is probably more specific. I'm, I'm more general on LinkedIn. Yeah, it's definitely... I would agree with that. The resume is very specific on like achievements and whatnot. The, what I find important in my content is like the high end lights. So like one of my roles, I was on a team of like a pretty decent sized team for the size company, but I was the only technology recruiter. So I led like the reorg of the IT department. So that's how I have it focused. Of course, on my resume it goes into like all the different types of technologies I help them implement, but at least I've got like some of the bigger on the, on my LinkedIn so that when I'm looking for professionals that have that. They know that I've been talking about that part of the industry for a long time. And you're Matt, anything to add to that? I think that for me, I, I've always kept my LinkedIn profile a little bit brief compared to, um, the uh, the amount of experience I've had in, in certain companies, I keep it you know a few lines. I, I I don't go into so much detail throughout the body of the of the profile. Um, I, you know, I guess there is differing opinions on it. I, I don't know. I, I I have seen some very very detailed LinkedIn profiles, and I've always wondered if somebody just uploaded the resume or they just copied and pasted the resume over. But I I like to keep it brief. Um, you know, my experience speaks for itself at the companies I've worked for. I've, I've recruited for many different types of positions. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's differing opinion. Andy? Yeah, I'd say this is why I love doing these things because I get a lot out of these conversations, sometimes more than what I put into them. But I would say mine's evolving. You know, I would say mine probably reads a little bit too detailed for – 
who my audience is that I am driving to my page or attempting to drive to my page. So it's probably something that I could even work on as, you know, kind of making a little bit more brief, a little bit more, a little bit more, um, you know, less recruiter talk specific um, and more, um, you know, uh, things that candidates and, and people out there looking for, for work are going to, are going to care and understand, you know, they're not going to understand what an intake session is necessarily unless they've managed people before, but you know, so I would say mine's probably evolving and probably needs, needs to be a little bit less detailed. See, I think I'm, I'm sort of with Sean, I think you're in this way. And even with Matt, my, my profile is sort of that 10,000 foot view, but I've been leaning towards, okay, I got, I don't need, I'm not going to make it look just like a full blown resume, but I need to look, make it look more like a resume and kind of the guiding point for me. And maybe this isn't just for recruiters, but talent in general, I, when you're looking at a job board, and I'm sure a lot of people in the, the COVID crisis going on are looking at job boards when they say, Hey, I'll apply with your LinkedIn profile. Oh, sweet. I don't have to do all that work. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> my, my profile is pretty narrow. It doesn't look like I did a whole lot. So that's my little thinking is, as it gets easier and easier to apply with LinkedIn, well, your profile should be up to date then or what have you. Oh, absolutely. If you're looking absolutely. for a job, it should mirror your resume a hundred percent. But once you're want, just focused on recruiting for your company, that's when you can kind of dial it back. And like Andy said, I love these conversations because it makes me think like, oh, maybe now's the time to tweak some of this stuff. So some of the stuff I did 12 years ago, I definitely don't need that blurb there anymore. <laughs> the one, the one thing, the one thing that I think is my pet peeve on LinkedIn profiles is that if a person leaves a company, they're done with that position, they should immediately update their profile. Like I can, I, I, I've seen it more so now. And there's a question on the chat about it with the COVID layoffs and so forth. Yeah, I, I saw that it. too. I get it. You want to make it look like you're still working but you're not at the company anymore. You're not in that position anymore. I feel like you should update your profile. You should close that up. And if it's going to leave a gap, it's going to leave a gap. But saying you're, or stating that you're still there and it's a, it's to present on your profile and that is still your role. And even in your top line, you're stating it is. I just, I, I disagree with it. I, I think yeah. you need to, people need to keep their profiles up to date. I agree. And I have two points to add to that for something that I've seen. Thing I've seen work out well and the other thing just let's face it if there's ever the right time to have a gap in employment it's right now everybody's right. going to understand why you have right. a gap right. so don't feel like it's going to look like you got fired or you took a package like that get that off the table the right recruiter the right company doesn't care they know that right. everybody's just navigating this space what exactly. I saw somebody do, it kind of goes back to the first topic um, that was discussed was your, your tagline, your headline. I've found candidates that say full stack developer currently seeking new opportunities. Like they changed their headline. So it was very easy for me to find in my search results like, oh, this guy's on the market today, not yeah. in the future. I'm not, com he's not a passive candidate, he's active. Like yeah. active as they come so and I think um, to speak to one of the other questions um, with speaking to um, blue-collar talent instead of white-collar talent um, earlier in my career I recruited for um, welders forklift drivers frontline workers um, at a packaging plant um, and I, I admit I used LinkedIn a lot less back then but I still had it um, because you still want to kind of stake your claim in the in the industry so that if they do try to figure out who's emailing them or calling them, that it circles back to you and you're verifiable. You're not just some bot that's sending out a thousand emails a day trying to find their person to fill the position. So I think in that sense, it's important. But then if you're looking to connect with people, I feel like LinkedIn's kind of the long game for that skill set or for those types of, of positions. They're just not on the computer as frequently. Yeah. Excellent. Hey, Sean, let's, let's jump over to your topic. So yeah, I was, I'm really focused on, on your activity, right? So it's, it's, you know, when you, when you jump onto LinkedIn, you're automatically on your homepage and you're seeing um, posts from people, right? So it's, you know, company news, personal news, um, photos, articles, just in information about, about the, uh, 
the world that you live in. So some people are probably more personal on there. Some people are, are less so, but um, I, you know, and I lean towards the professional on LinkedIn. Um, but all of, all of your activity that happens on there feeds back to your personal page. So that anything that you're liking or commenting on or any content that you're sharing or posts that you're putting out there, um, that's gonna be viewable when people go onto your profile. So for me, I, I, I think this is vitally important as, as brand ambassadors for the organization that you're working for. So, um, you know, if, if, if you're in, a, in an organization that is, um, you know, interested in kind of their social footprint, um, you should, there should be some sort of content calendar kind of development for your, for your team to be sharing information about the organization. So for us, that's, you know, we're sharing, we've got a rotation of company news that we share, um, interesting things about people in the organization. So whether, you know, it's, it's a certain person being promoted and their job, you know, that they were in previously is open and, you know, looking to be replaced, um, or uh, culture things about the organization. Um, all of that stuff feeds back to your profile and to that activity section. Um, and I think of HR, we are we are kind of the keepers of the culture, and and I think it's important to extend that culture beyond what you're doing in the physical office and putting it out there so that it, people can see it. Um, so, you know, I, I would encourage everyone on here to, to think about the content that you're sharing out there um, and the way that you interact with other people's uh, content. And like I said, that's through likes and comments and shares of other people's posts. Um, it all feeds back there. So I, I would encourage you not to leave that space empty to be active on there, but also, but to also be very thoughtful about what you put up there. Hey, Sean, kind of uh, in the weeds question for you. Any thoughts around post or article? Like, you know, when you go in your activities in LinkedIn, you can either be a post or it can be an article, right? Generally yeah. speaking, articles long form, post is short. Right? Any, yeah. any thoughts on that? On, on my team, we've got a, a, a kind of a, a content strategy around that where we're, we've got talent ambassadors, I suppose, um, that help us with content. So we come up with ideas for articles we'd like them to write. Um, and they drive that. So I mean, if, if it's if it's like you said, long form, short form, but like the articles should have a very specific goal in mind of, of what you're trying to put out there. Um, the other content is probably much easier if you're just posting a photo. Um, it, it, it's easier to digest for someone on LinkedIn. So I lean more towards, you know, regular posts of the just posts and then articles um, you know, once or twice a month that's very specific and targeted to people. And what about, do, do you use the featured piece in your activity string? Do you know what that is? I don't use that. I'm not sure what that is. So what a featured is, is I think it can be either a post or a comment, but once you post it, there's a little checkbox, would you like to feature this? And if you check feature, oh. it's like on the front page of your profile. So if you post 150 things over a year, but you want these three things to be always be seen versus being buried from six months ago, you would feature it. And then it's on the top of your profile or not, not, not literally the top, but it's right in that activity section. Yeah, yeah for sure. I would definitely encourage people to use that. I didn't realize that's what that was called, but yeah, yeah. Um, definitely would encourage usage of that. And especially if you're, if you've developed your own kind of article, um, or something that that leads real important importance to your culture. I would definitely encourage using that. Yeah, a lot of the feedback in the attendees was around, "Hey, make sure people know what you're re recruiting for at the current time." Well, I'm thinking, "Oh, I'd, I'd put that in my featured area because when I'm when I fill the rack or we're no longer doing it, I unfeature it and then it's no longer in that stream." Mm -hmm. I, I, like I do, like when I post these Zoom webinars, I put those in my featured section, so and that's all that's there, so they can easily see those going down that line. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of that, that feature piece because it pulls from the noise of a lot of content that you could possibly do, always brings it to the top. Almost like um, in, in Twitter, I think you can, it's not an anchor, I can't remember the term, but it's always at the top, same, same premise, but I'm a big fan of that piece. Yeah, like a pin tweet. Yeah, yeah, pin, there you go. You can sell them not on Twitter much. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else want to add to, to Sean's what he was talking about, referring to? Yeah. What? Go ahead, Andy. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Just you know, just another little point that I 
have been working on this year specifically. I, I, I shy away from saying it was one of my yearly goals, just kind of something that came up and I'm really focused on not having my content um, be solely about what I'm recruiting for. Um, and Sean mentioned this, but you know, for me, it, it really caused me to sit down and I actually created a spreadsheet um, and paced myself out for two weeks, about two weeks of what am I putting on there? Because if I visually see it and I visually plan for it, I can kind of see the message I'm sending. And the reason I don't want to just put stuff out there of you know what I'm recruiting for is I want the candidates to see that I care more about filling a job. Um, I care about the industry. I care about um, you know what I do. I care about the company. I'm passionate um, about volunteering. Um, you know, uh, I'm passionate about hiring veterans. Um, you know, just that that versatile information and really being strategic with um, your content being on broader subjects than than just what you're recruiting for. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I definitely agree with that, Andy. I think that the, your profile really has to be built out. And, you know, I might be dating myself, but going back to the original days of LinkedIn, you know, like when I first got on LinkedIn in 2000, end of 2005, 2006, mm -hmm. um, you didn't think about that as much, but having that more robust profile where it's built out and it looks like it's being used. And, you know, I've seen profiles that were just, you can tell they're not being used. I mean, I think that as a recruiter, especially, you have to you have to use your profile. You have to to to, to make it detailed. Make it make put some content in there that's different than just things that you're recruiting for. You know, pieces like that. Does everybody put a link to their profile and their email signature when they're emailing with candidates? Yep, that's pretty much a given. Yeah. Kristen, maybe not you. I don't know if you're shaking your head there. It depends. So there's definitely a link to my company's page because it's part of our email signature. So when it's when it's relevant to, uh, then I then I do my own, um, and I always share my my direct links when I'm involved in online job fairs and such. But normally, I just try to focus it less on me and more on my company. Gotcha. Right, Andy, let's let's jump over to your item. Yeah, um, what I wanted to focus on was uh, both uh, connections. You know, what what kind of connections you accept, um, as well as I think the most um, ignored part of a LinkedIn profile, which is the um, you know the referrals or the the references that you can gain um, and give uh, from the LinkedIn. Um, uh, page and you know for me as far as connections are concerned and this is going to be a very you know diverse answer i'm sure from the panel as well as people listening but um i very rarely reject a connection uh, because it's no skin off of my back if they're following what i'm saying and i can control whether or not i want to see those through um you know uh, i think it's called uh, hiding or um unfollowing which you're not mm -hmm you're not disconnecting that connection, but you are disconnecting seeing it coming up on, on your page constantly. And so I, I accept pretty much everybody. Um, and then I take it a step further and really try to on a daily basis as those connections come in and be like, you know what, if this, is this somebody that I should connect to on a deeper level? Um, and obviously you have to work with the bandwidth and the time that you have, but, um, but really putting yourself out there and, and using LinkedIn for what it is, which is networking, um, is only going to help you. I think people just use, you know, if they're just using it to post jobs and to find candidate, that's great and it's a good resource, but you have to connect. You have to, you have to be able to share ideas and just sometimes, like I was on a call the other day with a recruiter from England um, because I connected with him. I liked a couple of things that he liked and he liked what I was posting and he was like, hey, do you wanna chat? And we jumped on a Zoom call and I talked to this guy in England and I was like, hey, how's COVID? affecting you guys over there. I would have never had that conversation. So really just putting yourself out there and, and gaining your, you know, gaining something yourself from the connections that you have. And then the references, the referrals. Um, if I have a good candidate experience with somebody, you know, the ones that you're just like, at the end of the day, you just go home and you tell your significant other, man, this guy, I really was able to help him out, got a job. It was this great experience through and through why the heck are you not asking for a reference from that person to be posted on your LinkedIn? And it's really easy to do. You just ask for a recommendation from somebody and it gets sent to them. They say, Hey, uh, yes or no, they can 
deny putting a recommendation um, out there. And then you have a chance to approve it or ask for some things to be changed. So if he says something in there, they say, mm, I don't really want that on there. You can ask that. Um, but really building out that recommendations for your future, um, for your employment future, as well as, again, candidates that are coming and looking at your profile saying, do I want to work for a company that this guy is representing? Um, I think it's one of the most ignored parts of LinkedIn that shouldn't be. What about, uh, oh, go ahead, Matt. No, I, I agree with that. I mean, I think that I've, uh, I've looked at people's refer, uh, recommendations on their profiles. I've con I've seen connections that I've had that made a recommendation. It holds a lot of weight. Uh, although people, some people don't agree with that, I, I really think it holds some weight to see a recommendation on a profile, to see it visible from someone that you may know, someone in your network, that, that's a big deal. What about, and Andy, maybe you do this already, what about asking your internal hiring team members, hiring managers or people on the hiring team, internal, your fellow employees, are you asking them? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that your relationship with your hiring managers, if that is seen as positive, um, you know, in, in public, that's going to be great. I mean, it's, let's face it. It's one of the most talked about strains in recruiting is your relationship with certain hiring managers. And if you can have a, a book of those of recommendations from those managers and candidates see that and other managers see that that's going to help you. And then I was going to also say, especially I'm not a contract recruiter, um, but for contract recruiters, man, you, better be doing that you know your clients that you've worked for if if you can get a recommendation from them uh, from somebody within that organization that's going to help your efforts in the future as well yeah that's where the bulk of my recommendations came from when I was doing my own consulting for about a year I worked for like six or seven different companies back to back and I made sure to get like a candidate a hiring manager and somebody on my team to all say like their experience with me so that I could keep building my network so I highly advocate for, for making sure that there's at least one for every step of your career, whether it's on a contract basis or if you get promoted within the same company, just make sure somebody can, can evaluate that even on the surface um, because it just shows, it, like if you read them from all the newest, it should show a growth path there too, if you're marketing yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of circling back to your, your earlier piece, Andy, was uh, the connection request. I, I've done this a few times in my life for myself. I've done it to help other recruiters or recruiters at places that I've worked at. I always call it the flip request, where if you're a new recruiter to a company, let's say you're a tech recruiter and you want to get connected with the, especially if you've moved and you need to get connected to the local tech talent or any talent, is we would run a campaign to let's say 100 candidates say, hey, I'm Joe, I'm the new recruiter, I work here, I represent this company, this is what I do, love to connect you on LinkedIn, here's a link to my profile, click it, I'll quickly accept your request. So we send out an email to all that key talent, not everybody in the TS, obviously, usually if they've passed screens or come in bronze sites, and then they click and invite you. So rather than you connecting with 100 people, there's 100 people connecting with you. Has anybody ever done that type of effort? Works like a charm if you want to build your network quick. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if there's some type of segue as to the reasons why you're doing it right versus just blindly, hey, why don't you send me a link? That's eh, kind of ballsy a little bit to, to go and ask for that. But if you do have, like if it's an introduction, like, hey, Matt, I want to just introduce you to Sean. And I send that out to 100 other people introducing them to Sean, not this Sean, the other Sean. <laughs> uh, that's another way too. So it's like a flip with an introduction. That's another way to kind of get out of the, well, why don't you send me a link uh, type mm -hmm. feeling from it. But when you yeah. set it up correctly and you want to build network, great way to do it. I, I don't know if everybody remembers, LinkedIn used to share your connections email so you could export yeah. it and have their email, put it wherever you wanted. Yeah, that's been gone for I think two years now. Yeah. You gotta yeah. dig for it a little bit. Some people still have it. Very few. Uh, I, yeah. I was like, oh, I can't believe they did that. Cause I'm a CRM guy. So I would always export. I'd ask yeah, people, hey, yeah, hey, send me your network. If I'm like yeah. another coworker, right? We wanted to build up recruiting. So recruiters would export their network. We built their all the people we didn't want and put them into the CRM. It worked like, it worked great, but killed that one. Uh, hey, we, we've gone a little bit over well, maybe quite a bit over. I appreciate everybody's time. I do have one question for you and all the other recruiters who are still here on the attendees. There is a setting in LinkedIn 
that makes it you're available to receive in mails, right? Where recruiters who are like recruiters use in mails, right? If you have a LinkedIn account and you get an X amount allotment every month, but contacts or candidates in LinkedIn can set it. So, Hey, if you want to in mail me, you're not going to use one of your in mails, even if I don't, if I don't see it or don't respond. Mm -hmm. I highly encourage all recruiters to set that setting. So your other mm -hmm. recruiters can engage with you at, not at will, but without using up any of their in-mail. Without accounts. a cross, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember what the setting is, but it's ability to- I just content. stumbled across it recently. That's um, pretty good. And it's when you're editing your profile and there's like, depending on what type of premium membership you have, the, the little LinkedIn symbol is either blue or gold, or mine's gold because of the premium. And if you drop down, it says open profile. And this is a premium feature that allows anyone on LinkedIn to contact you directly for free, even if they're not connected with you. I see. That, I I, that's the loophole around the in-mails. Yeah, I don't know if, I, I assumed the LinkedIn recruiter account was a premium, because I know it just can't be yeah. anybody. You do have to step up a little bit, so I would assume. Yeah. That. So any version of premium, it could be the one that's 30 bucks a month just to highlight your profile, or it could be like an actual recruiter license and it'll, your profile shows a premium instead of just the free version. Because I've been recruiting recruiters for this whole group and I, when I use in-mails and I see free in-mail, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have to hit my max. Hit my <laughs> so again, encourage everybody to do it. Not just for me, but just for everybody. I think it's a nice professional peer-to-peer -peer thing to do. All right, any, any final comments or any, any additions to it? I know I, I saw you guys were getting to the chat, much appreciated in the chat area. I would, um, I would use LinkedIn learning and there is a loophole around that as well. And LinkedIn will probably kill me if they hear this, but if you do a trial version of a premium for link for a premium account of LinkedIn, you can do a trial 30 day trial it used to be, I don't know if it's 30 days anymore. You can go ahead and take LinkedIn learning classes right on LinkedIn and you can take as many as you want for that trial period. And I would encourage LinkedIn learning. We have an account in my company. I encourage them through my recruiting team to, to use it. There's so many different courses available, but that trial of the premium, I don't know if they still offer it. I hope they do. You can take LinkedIn learning courses and add them to your profile. It adds them directly after you complete the course. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Andy, any final comments? Um, you know, just that your profile is yours and you have to make it yours. I mean, there's a lot of opinions out there, um, but you just have to, as long as you're working on it, you know, you, you have to be doing something. If it's just stagnant, that's going to be uh, worse than, than, you know, doing something. Um, but yeah, just make it you, uh, your, your candidates and people you work for should, should see you on your profile and that should help you in your recruiting. Sean, yeah. I was I was about to say that same exact thing Andy said. Uh, make it you. I mean, it's it's so important to be your your own individual person. We really look for individual people, and at Go Health, where I work, um, we want those people to shine through. So um, you know, be as personal as, as as you can on your your page to really. I think that's what stands out when you don't look like a robot to me, um, but you look like a real person who's like I said has real activity on there real references like that's what's going to get people to to draw interest to you a likable so, recruiter a likable <laughs> and Chris <Christopher. Steal> <laughs> yeah my sentiments exactly um we're human we want to connect with other humans that's why we yeah. do what we do that's why we chose this profession so paint that picture i i try to optimize by having something in every section that linkedin recommends to be on a profile some parts are larger than others, but, but be real with, with companies you're interested in, groups that you're part of. It doesn't all have to be work-related. It's in a, we're in 2020, like it's okay to be you professionally, not just professional version of you versus private life version of you anymore. And I'm so happy to be here to, to see it happen, but we gotta keep like pushing the candidates to, to be their true selves because like you said, John, like we want those that that have the personalities that will shine. They'll help with deliverables. They'll help with team camaraderie. We want to see that. It's all part of the interview process. And now it's, I mean, it's part of the sourcing process too. 
Excellent. Uh, fantastic, everybody. I wanted to thank again, everybody. I thought that was a really good conversation and a tool that everybody lives in, whether they want to or not, whether they yeah. love it or hate it. It is yeah. part of our life. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, Sean. Thank, thank you. Bye.